Hello, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards. I'm an independent consultant and also the founder of developer2architect.com. In today's lesson, number 74, we'll be taking a look at what I recently coined as the elephant migration anti-pattern. And this is an anti-pattern uh, when migrating from monolithic applications over to microservices. I was recently teaching an online class through O'Reilly Media, and we came across this situation and somebody said, well, can you describe the anti-patterns? And I kind of named it during that recent class. I call it the elephant migration anti-pattern when migrating from monolithic applications to microservices because there was a point in that class where I basically said, how do you eat an elephant? And I was equating the elephant to a monolithic, a very large monolithic application. And of course, uh, the entire class answered the classic answer, one byte at a time. And so that's where this kind of anti-pattern came about. And let me describe this. If we have a large monolithic application and we're converting to microservices, um, one of the anti-patterns in migrating applications is to start to eat away at that large monolith, just like an elephant, one byte at a time. And what I advised in that class was don't do this. And because you see, the problem is when we move to microservices, we really don't move classes, but rather we move components, those building blocks. Uh, this is usually manifested, for example, in Java applications through a package structure or in C Sharp as a namespace. And so by focusing on these building blocks, the components, these are the units of software, including all those classes that we move over to a microservice. Now, one of the things to avoid the elephant migration anti-pattern is, of course, having a radar. Um, one of the things about this anti-pattern, about kind of eating an elephant one bite at a time, is as I just illustrated, we start to chew away at our monoliths, but we have no visible radar. We have no way of seeing what we're in store for. Let me show you three tools we can use to get these visualizations uh, to avoid this anti-pattern of migration. Uh, the first is an older tool called X-Ray. Now, X-Ray um, is an Eclipse plugin, and I've provided the links right here. Um, it's an older tool, but very, very powerful. Now, I'm going to show you some other tools that show you the same kind of radars. But um, by basically um, looking at component interactions or component dependencies, X-Ray will give you these views. And now the key point here is that all these boxes that you see on the screen right now are all components. In other words, package structures or namespaces. And the lines between them show the dependencies. And this forms a radar. Now you might say, wait a minute, what dependencies? Exactly. In this particular real example, there weren't many dependencies between these building blocks, which means all of these package structures right here are candidates for a microservice. But most of the times you won't get this lucky and you'll see a radar that looks like this. Now the thickness of a line in X-ray actually shows you the number of dependencies. The thicker the line, the more dependencies. I can hover over any of these and it will tell me exactly what those dependencies are. The, the green one there is, of course, just because I put that in focus and so it turns it green. Um, you can kind of see um, if we ate the elephant one bite at a time, we probably would start at the far right hand side towards the middle there and start chewing away at it having no idea what we're in store for when we start getting on the left-hand side of this application. Uh, another tool uh, that I use frequently instead of X-Ray now is something called Sonar Graph. Now, Sonar Graph Explorer works for Java, C Sharp, and also Python, and gives you these same kind of views, these dependency views, these radars, to be able to see various components and the interactions and dependencies to know when we start pulling off a component as a possible service, uh, what other kinds of components are going to be coming with this.
Now, a third tool that I don't like as much, but I'll still show it to you, is something called Code City. Now, Code City is written in Smalltalk and as such uh, requires an upload of a moose file, a .mse file, and that's what iPlasma does. I've provided the link here uh, to where you can download iPlasma from my website, uh, run insider.shellscript or bat, and point it to the root directory, and what that gives you is your application as a city landscape. Lots of analysis we can do with this, but primarily, if you turn on component edges, it gives you that same sort of dependency diagram, but more in a three-dimensional view. Now, I certainly can show this um, on its side or even in a, a bird's eye view and get more of that two-dimensional. But these are three tools that you can use to develop that radar so that we don't eat the elephant one bite at a time, but rather have visualizations to know where our problem areas are in the application when we start to migrate monolithic applications over the two microservices. So for more information, I'm very excited to announce that uh, the release of uh, a new book by myself and also Neil Ford called The Fundamentals of Software Architecture. Um, as the time of this writing, uh, the early release is available, or I should say the time of this recording. <laughs> the early release is available on the link provided above. Uh, the full book will be published on February uh, 25th of uh, 2020. Also, of course, stay tuned to Software Architecture Monday, where every other Monday I do provide a lesson in Software Architecture. I've provided the link there. I do offer both private and public training classes. You can go to the training website of uh, my website to find out about those training courses, um, both in architecture and also microservices, and also upcoming events page where you can see where I'm at at conferences and also uh, public training offerings. And so this has been lesson number 74, the elephant migration anti-pattern. Again, my name is Mark Richards, and thank you so much for listening.